So in this video, we're going to start writing some geometric proofs. To, and our geometric proofs are going to be about segments and angles. So relating back to the last unit and things we've done this unit. So your objective is that you can write a complete proof dealing with segments and angles. And you can state the elements of a proof. Alright, so remember what is a proof from your previous video. Um, it's just a logical argument to prove a statement. Um, you have statements and you have reasons. Um, you can remember to use a diagram to help structure your argument, and we'll talk about that when we actually see a proof. And then really support, you have to support your statements with definitions, postulates, theorems, properties, or another one you can have is the given. And ask yourself, why do I know that? If I have this statement, why do I know that? What does it relate to? What is it talking about? If you keep asking yourself this, this will help um, really help you come up with your reasons for that statement. All right, so here is your first proof. So notice, like I told you, there's a given. The given, and right here we have a two column proof we're going to write, you write in your first line. I know AB is congruent to CD. This is free information, just kind of like free money. And then use your diagram to help you. I have AB is congruent to CD. So AB is the same length as CD. And But then I also have that EF and CD are the same. Well, CD is that. EF is the same. And the reason why I know this, it didn't just magically appear, it was given to me. So I write given. It was my free information. So now let's examine the diagram. Again, I talked about in the previous video, the diagram is important. So I'm trying to prove that these two are the same length. They are congruent. Well, if you kind of look at it, you have AB is equal to CD, but also CD is equal to EF. And you might be going, well, duh, of course AB and EF have to be the same, but there's a reason for why we can just automatically say that A, B, and E, F are the same. So thinking back to the properties that we have learned about, anytime you have something that is congruent, and that thing is congruent to something else, well then the two things are also equal to each other. If you think of the Abraham Lincoln clip I had you watch, um, that's what he was talking about. Two things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. So these two are both equal or congruent to the same thing. So then they're equal to each other. And then you just have to remember what property that is. Well, you should have learned that is the transitive property. You're transferring is the way I like to think of it. Well, are we done? Well, look here. I have AB is equal to EF. The prove should be your last statement. And the reason why I did it was the transit property. We are done. That's it for your proof. That's the reason why you know it. It's a nice short two-step proof. All right. So on this one, you have your given. HI is 9. IJ is 9. IJ and it's segment IJ is congruent to segment JH. All right. That was your given. And I'm trying to prove that HI is the same length or is congruent to JH. Alright, so notice here I say mark your diagram. This is an important key to help you be successful with proofs. Write what you are given on here. HI is 9. We know this length is 9. IJ is also 9. Alright. I know also that IJ and JH are congruent. So what I'm trying to prove is that these two, HI, is the same length as JH. Which some of you guys might again go, well, yeah, I can totally see that because if these both are 9 and this is the same as that, well, then these two have to be the same. We just need to write a valid argument to prove this. So right here, I've given you some of the statements. I've given you one reason. But right here, I have HI equals 9. So again, 
Why do I know that? Well, I was given to me. It's in the given. So I like to look through if I've given some of the statements. I find where all my givens are at. There's another given. Alright, and IJ and JH, that one's actually way down here. So we are given. All right. So now I have HI equals to IJ. Why do I know that this is the same length as that? So what I like to do is look at my previous statements first. Because there might be something up here that tells me. Well, HI equals 9 and IJ equals 9. And if you think of the Lincoln video, two things are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Well, that's your transitive property. Um, I would also accept um, the substitution property in this case. Because you're also doing that. You can substitute, since this equals 9, I can substitute that in for 9. Alright, so now I have a reason and I don't have the statement. So I need to figure out what they want to talk about. Definition of congruence. Notice when I want to try to prove I have the congruent part. So definition of congruent segments. Well, congruent segments, we've been learning our mean equal. So if I need, if I have HI equals to IJ, that also tells me that HI is congruent to IJ. It seems like a step like you really wouldn't have to do, but again, you're trying to make your argument valid and equal and congruent, they don't look the same. So you have to say, well, equal means congruent. Now we have the given. Now we need to figure out why can I say what I'm trying to prove? Notice IH and JH is the last thing. Why can I prove that? So again, I look. Kind of my previous statements, is there something given away? And notice the situation I have. Oop, I have to write my lines up here. It's a bad notation. I have IJ and IJ. Well, I have, if two things are equal to the same thing, that is. There's that transitive property again. Keep thinking of Lincoln. And you're done. So on C, um, we're going to do um, this proof. Uh -huh. And this one I'm not going to do two column. I'm going to do as a paragraph. So you're going to bear with me. So prove the properties of a midpoint. If you know M is a midpoint of AB, so you're given. M is a midpoint of AB. So what does that tell you? Midpoint. Midpoint means middle. So that means it's in the middle. So I can mark this and this. So we're going to prove that AB is 2 times AM. Or AM is 1 half AB. We're actually only going to do one of these for the length of the video. We're just going to do A. So I'm going to do this as a paragraph proof and kind of show you what it means. Like I told you, this is probably just one of, I like to do this once in a while because sometimes it's just easier to write it out. Or in this case, I'm going to type it out. So any time you start proof, you're going to start with a given. So you say, um, it is given, you could write, that M is the midpoint of AB. Alright. So what? M is a midpoint, so what did it tell you? Well, I actually did it on the diagram over here. Since M is a midpoint of AB, I knew that these two are the same. So therefore, AM is congruent, or you can do the symbol for congruent to MB. I wrote congruent because it's hard the symbol to get the symbol congruent out I would have to do. It would take a little more time. However, if you notice in my proof, I have an equal sign. So, um, I need to make my congruent equals. So I could state, oh, I need a reason. Again, anytime you make a statement, I need a reason. So AMM is congruent to MB. 
by, why do I know that? Well, I thought of the definition of a midpoint. There was no theorem, it was just a definition of a midpoint. All right. So again, going back, we have congruent. Why do I know something is congruent? Well, if something's congruent, they're also equal. And I need the equal because of the equal right here. All right. So then, by definition of congruence, AM equals MB. All right, so we're slowly making our way to it. We have, but somehow I need two times AM. Well, think about this here. These two segments make up a bigger segment. We learned this a while ago that this is the segment addition postulate. All right, by the segment addition postulate that you learned back in unit one, AB equals AM plus MB. All right, so let me point out a couple things that we have here to help you make a clear statement. You have AM equals MB. You have AB equals AM plus MB. Notice in what I'm trying to prove, there is no MB. But I know AM and MB are the same from over here. So I can replace this MB by AM. So I can go back to my proof. I'm replacing, replacing means substitution, by the substitution property AB equals AM plus AM. I replaced MB by AM. Well, anytime you have two times each other, so if you think of kind of going, if you have x plus x, this means you have 2x. So if I have AB plus AB, that means you have two of them. So then AB equals 2. A M. Alright. And that is kind of just your addition property. And there is your proof. It's like it's just like a two column, but I just kind of wrote it out to help me think. Again, you pick whichever method that you want. Alright, one last one I'm gonna write go through really fast. So you're given 1 and 2 are a linear pair. So I'm going to type that out. I am given that whoop, sorry, angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair. So think to yourself, <laughs> so what? What does a linear pair mean? Well, we know by the definition of linear pair that these two add up to 180. So from here, and even if you want to write your paragraph into lines, you can do that to show, make it a little more step by step. So by the definition of a linear pair, because I said, okay, what's a linear pair? Well, what is it is means definition? Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Well, then from here, I need to get M, measure of angle 1, equals 180 minus the measure of angle 2, which is kind of what you have here if I wrote it out in the symbols. Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 really close to what I'm trying to prove. It's just I need the two to the other side. Well, since I'm adding, 
I need to subtract angle 2. So I can write down here, and lastly, by the subtraction property of equality, angle 1 equals 180 degrees minus angle 2. And if I had write it out, I would, that just means angle 1 equals 180 degrees minus angle 2. And I'm done. I proved what I was told to prove. So review, again, very important. Why do I know that? Take your time to think about the proofs before you start. Don't be afraid to work with each other and kind of bounce ideas. Why do we know that? Why can we define that? Um, and make sure you understand. Don't just scribble through this. You're not going to do you any good by just trying to f figure out or copy off your neighbor's paper. It will come back to haunt you. And I promise it will get easier. I really, really do. Um, it's going to be a few weeks of very tough thinking. But that's going to be great for you to help you grow, kind of giving you that growing mindset. Um, just a reminder to do your reflections. You get credit for watching this video.